Dun, 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 dun. Brother Roy here, Old School Bible Baptist Ministries. We're moving along in our series, Are You Nuts for Nuggets? Using Brother Kevin Mann, M-A-N-N, -N. Google it, get you one. First mention, study Bible. All right, we're moving into the book of First Samuel. Let's pray. Father, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the book. Now just be glorified in these next few minutes in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. All right. Well, hey, you know, pull up a cup of mud, pull up a seat, grab a cup of, mu cup of mud, and let's man up and dig for some nuggets. All right. I looked ahead, and it's a pretty, it's a pretty thick section here of nuggets in 1 Samuel. So I'll just try to skim and pick out some of the more interesting stuff that jumps out at me. There's no way we can go through all of these. There's just, I'm telling you, there's just so much information in this Bible that I'm just giving you some teasers. All right. So 1 Samuel is the ninth book of the Bible. Nine is the number for fruit bearing prayer and the Holy Ghost. Um, first in uh, First Samuel one, this is a great example of the biblical view of the Hebrew tithe in the Old Testament. The Israelite farmer Elkanah grew the crop, brought a tithe of the increase to Jerusalem to celebrate the feast. The farmer takes ninety percent of the tithe and eats it with all his family and servants before the Lord in Jerusalem. The uneaten tenth that is called the tithes, 10% of the tithe, was taken to the temple and given to the priest to be placed in the storehouse for the Levites and their upkeep. Amen. Okay. First uh, Samuel 2, 1 through 10. The first 10 verses are the prophetic prayer of Hannah, just as Mary the mother of the Lord Jesus prophesied at his circumcision. Hannah gives us the first coming, verse 1, uh, thy salvation, verse 2, the rock our God, the second coming, and the millennium, verse 9 and 10, of the Lord Jesus Christ. She prays 265 words. First um, Samuel 2, 8, to make them Israel to inherit the throne of glory is a reference to the Jews who will inherit the literal, visible, physical kingdom of heaven, which is to be set up by the Lord Jesus Christ at his second coming. First Samuel 3, 3, air, E-R-E, -E, before the candle of the Lord went out. This is the calling of Samuel, who is uh, the beginning of the kings in the Bible. Jesus Christ is coming as king of kings at the second advent. After the lamp, the Holy Ghost removes Christ's bride from the earth. Second Chronicles thirteen eleven to burn every evening. Um, this is a reference to the lampstand in the holy place of the temple, which is a picture of the light of God, the Holy Ghost, giving light over against the table of showbread. The showbread is a type of the Lord Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven and the word of God. The candlestick was to be lit at evening, at the time of sacrifice, a picture of the Holy Ghost coming to earth on the day of Pentecost to light up the night as the nighttime, the church age, was beginning and the lamp was put out at sunrise. The night is a picture of what we know as the church age. Sunrise is a picture of the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, let's take a close look at Exodus 27, 20, and 21. Here we have God instructing Moses concerning the furnishings and the services of the tabernacle. Uh, in verse 20, he says, And thou shalt command the children of Israel that they bring the pure oil, olive, beaten for the light to cause the lamp to burn always. Uh, how many of you have ever been taught that the light in the tabernacle, 
light in the tabernacle was to burn constantly as in 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Keep reading. Verse 21, in the tabernacle of the congregation, without the veil, which is before the testimony, Aaron and his sons shall order ordain it from evening to morning before the Lord. It shall be a statute forever unto their generations on behalf of the children of Israel from evening to morning, 600, 365 days a year, not 24 hours a day. That is an important understanding. Amen. And uh, there are no sacrifices during the nighttime. And the nighttime is a picture of the church age. Sacrifice has already been made. For Samuel 4.21, Ichabod appears only one time in the Bible. The name means the glory is departed from Israel. The word Ichabod's in the, in the uh, possessive appears one time in 14.13. First Samuel 4:22. 4, 4 plus 22 equals 26. That's two times 13. Just a coincidence, not. The address equals 26, which is a multiple of 13. Here we see the quote from Eli's daughter-in-law when she was dying in childbirth. It just happens to be a total of 13 words. The glory is departed from Israel, for the ark of God is taken. This is the beginning of a long 20-year stretch without the ark, uh, the place where God met with the Israelites. The number 13 is the number for rebellion, and the Lord, which is represented by the ark, is removed from the children of Israel due to their constant rebellion against the Lord and his statutes. First Samuel 5.5 Five, five, double death. <laughs> Dagon's house, he's a false god. The word Dagon um, and Dagon's appear a total of 13 times in the Bible. He is the false fish god, a type of Satan. The first mention of Dagon is in Judges. Uh, the Pope, the head of the idol-worshipping Roman Catholic Church, um, wears a hat that is a replica of Dagon the fish god to this day totally pagan, nothing Christian about the false religion. They worship the queen of heaven. They are false brethren, false teachers, false prophets, false apostles, teaching false doctrines to fake Christians by the vicar of Christ, also known as the Antichrist, who comes out of the bottomless pit. His whore wife, religious Babylon, is closed with purple and scarlet, she has unclean spirits. She is guilty of the blood of the saints. She is called the great whore and is involved in satanic rituals. The original Antichrist was Judas Iscariot, who was always mentioned last in any list of the disciples. And when adding Jesus as the first, he was always number 13. There were 13 men in the upper room at the Last Supper, and it was Judas Iscariot who betrayed Jesus. Amen. First Samuel uh, 6, 6 through 18. Here we see the ark of God sitting upon a cart being carried to the land of Israel after 20 years away from the Israelites with beasts like, like cherubim of burden. And the ark appears to Israel and is declared as returned by the prophet Samuel. It just so happened that it came to the field of Joshua, another name for Jesus, just by accident, I'm sure. The name of the town is also, just by chance, Beth Shemesh, which means the house of the sun, just by chance, where the Son of God will dwell, a great type of the second coming of the Lord Jesus. Amen. So uh, in 1 Samuel 8, 7, uh, we, when Israel wants a king, and says, For they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. The Jews also said of the Lord Jesus that we will not have this man to reign over us.
1 Samuel 10, 16, the matter of the kingdom, verse 16, the man of the kingdom, verse 22, the manner of the kingdom, verse 25, and the men of the kingdom, verse 26. This is the first reference in the Bible to literal, visible, physical Jewish kingdom of Israel with a king in charge. Up to now, they were a theocracy, that is, they were governed by, excuse me, they were governed by God through a prophet and judges. First time the word kingdom is mentioned in the Bible is in Genesis 10, 10, Gentile number, in reference to the first Gentile kingdom of the Antichrist, 13 letters, founded in Babylon and headed up by Nimrod, the 13th from Adam, whose name means the panther or rebel. Uh, 1 Samuel 10, 6, the word capital S spirit appears seven times in 1 Samuel. The word, the word evil spirit appears seven times in 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel 11 is a picture of the tribulation and uh, with an association in the text of a dark, the right eye, just as we see portrayed today with the covering of the eye. Uh, depicting the uh, 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 Nahash is a, a serpent. The serpent is the deceiver. Serpent is the devil. For Samuel twelve nine, here is the eighteenth six 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 use of the name Sisera in the Bible. He was Captain Sisera. 13 letters, who mightily oppressed the children of Israel in Judges 4 and was defeated by a woman, Deborah and Barak. A picture of the church, the bride, returning with the Lord to defeat the enemies of God that have surrounded Jerusalem. First Samuel 14, 1 through 18. Here we see the first use in the Bible of the word armor. The word armor bearer appears a total of seven complete times in chapter 14. He, he completes his master. The armor bearer is always with the master. In this case, he is servant to the son of the king, Jonathan. The armor bearer is responsible for the upkeep of the weapons of war for his master. He is the one who makes his master look proper in the fight. The armor bearer was always consulted on the plan of battle. The armor bearer was a key part of the defense of the master. He was always with him. He was always encouraging the right thing. He always listened to the words of his master. He was submissive and obedient. Even if he was unsure of the actions to be taken, he was always in on the strategy for battle. The armor bearer always carried the burden. He is there no matter what, uh, when the master reveals himself to the enemy, the armor bearer reveals himself also. He was always kept in the know of the plan that lay ahead. He always followed the command of the master. He always had his back. The armor bearer is a type of the spouse of the man of God. Amen. First Samuel fifteen twenty three, Rebellion, the 36th word in Samuel's quote, is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Here, Samuel includes the first use of the word witchcraft, idolatry connected with iniquity, stubbornness, and rebellion. He just happens to speak 66 words in these two verses with the word rebellion as the number 36, six times six. These are by association are these are by association added to the meaning the number 13 along with an association of sixes. 1 Samuel 15:23. 1 Samuel 15:24 Saul says I have sinned and have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy words. 1 Samuel 16, 14, the first mention of the phrase, evil spirit from the Lord. 
1 Samuel 16, 18. Here Saul requests a player of a harp, and David is commended with seven defining observations. Son of Jesse, cunning in playing, a mighty valiant man, a man of war, prudent in matters, a comely person, and last but not least, the Lord is with him. He became the king's armor bearer and his personal musician. Not bad for a little shepherd boy in Israel. First Samuel 17 is the longest chapter in First Samuel with uh, 58 verses. Uh, this chapter is a great picture of the Lord Jesus Christ defeating the Antichrist at the Battle of Armageddon. Um, we got some uh, uh, first mentions, champ champion, Goliath, helmet, mail, greaves, target, weavers, spears, and Philistine. Goliath of Gath, 13 letters, is a type of the Antichrist, 13 letters. Judas Iscariot, 13 letters, who comes up against the tribes of Israel in war and is defeated by David, who is a type of Christ by a fatal blow to the head. See Genesis 3.15 where the serpent gets his head crushed. And by the way, the word head or forehead appears seven times complete in the chapter where the Antichrist, Goliath, lost his. Amen. Just a coincidence, I'm sure. <laughs> Amen. The name Goliath means one that is exiled, just like Lucifer, the fifth cherub that covered the throne of God, sinned and became Satan he was then exiled from God's throne in heaven and now resides in outer space. He will again be cast down in the tribulation period under the earth when he will persecute Israel as never before. First Samuel 17, 8, the Philistine, 13 letters. And the Philistines appear a total of 40, a number for trials, times in chapter 17. The uh, children of Israel were commanded to utterly destroy them when they came into the land from Egypt. But of course, they are like me and you. <laughs> they failed to do what God told them to do. So now the, the price to pay is high. First Samuel 17, 34, the words lion and bear are repeated three times in these three verses for a total number of six. Uh, verse 37, paw, the paw is the first mentions of the lion and the bear. The lion and the bear are associated with the devil, Satan, and that old serpent. First Samuel 17, 40, David selected five smooth stones, the number for death. He took with him what had been proved effective in his past, a staff or a walking stick used as a weapon, stones, and a shepherd bag, which is a scrip or a pouch or a sling. First Samuel 18.30, his name was much set by. The first use of the phrase describing the name of David, a type of Christ, as being precious. For Samuel 19.2, Jonathan, a type of the Christian surrendered to the King of Kings, Jesus Christ, in type here as David, the rightful king of the kingdom, delighted much in David. Uh, I delight much in the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the king of the kingdom of my heart and soul, uh, my all in all, the one and only Savior and Redeemer. Saul, my father, seeketh to kill me. My father, Adam, Satan, and my flesh seek to kill the Lord Jesus Christ in me to make me ineffective and non-submissive to the leadership of Christ, the true and rightful king. For Samuel 19.5, the phrase, Wherefore wilt thou sin against innocent blood? 13 letters. To slay David without a cause. 13 letters. This is a direct reference to Judas Iscariot, 13 letters, who betrayed the Lord's innocent blood, the Lord Jesus teaching the followers on the mount 
in Matthew 5.22 reads, But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. First huh. Samuel 20.30 Thou son of a perverse, rebellious woman. <laughs> This is the 26, 2 times 13, appearance of the word rebellious, and it just happens to be the 18th, 3 times 6, word in the verse. 6s and 13s are a bad combo when they show up together. First Samuel 23, 28. Oh, wait. Selahama <laughs> 16 letters. Tied with the third, tied with the third place for the longest name. Isaiah eight one contains the longest name in the Bible, with eighteen letters. Mahershal al Hashbaz, <laughs> the second longest is Judges three eight. The third longest is Joshua eighteen twenty four and First Samuel twenty three twenty eight. The name Nabal, <laughs> stupid or foolish, appears eighteen eighteen. 666 times in chapter 25. Doctrinally, Nabal is a type of the Gentiles in the Great Tribulation that refuse to help the fleeing Jews who are running from the Antichrist, Saul. Uh, spiritually, Nabal is a type of the lost flesh who spurns the messengers, preachers of the Lord, and ultimately rejects the Lord himself, and dies in his sins and goes to hell. Just by coincidence, the 13th time that Nabal's name is mentioned is in 2538, and the Lord smote Nabal that he died. And it is also the 13th word in the verse minus the one italicized word after. The address also equals 18666. Nabal was a selfish, prideful man he used seven personal references when replying to David's men in verse 10 and 11. He was consumed with I, me, and my. Ah, that's good. The name Abigail means my father's joy. Her name appears nine times, fruit bearing, Holy Ghost, prayer, nine times in chapter 25. You can see her heart as she brings help to the fleeing Jews, her prayerful humility, her words of comfort to those who are in distress. Doctrinally, Abigail is a type of those in the tribulation who will help the fleeing Jews and will be spared the death of the, tri the tribulation uh, because of their acts towards the Jews. Spiritually, she is a type of the soul of the lost man who, after the flesh is overcome and finally dies, she is free to be married to David, a type of the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Verse 39, 3 times 13, the name Nabal is the sixth word in the verse. His name appears three times in the verse. Old 666 himself shows up in that verse. That is a mul and that is a multiple. Uh, oh, 666 shows up in a verse that is a multiple of 13s. Amen. All right. The verse contains 61 words, which is the 18th prime number, just by accident, I'm sure. <laughs> Amen. There are two wives mentioned in this verse, Abigail, the father's joy, Ahinoam, my brother is grace, and Abigail is a type of the church age saints, Ahinoam, a type of the tribulation saints that are raptured with Moses and Elijah at the end of the tribulation period, Revelation 11, the church and tribulation saints will rule with Christ for a thousand years. Amen. And finally, first. Samuel 31, 8 and 9, Saul, a type of the Antichrist, 13 letters, is defeated and beheaded and stripped of his armor in Mount Giboa, about five miles from Armageddon, just as the Antichrist will lose his head to the Lord Jesus Christ there. Amen. And that was some nuggets from 1 Samuel. Hope that was a blessing to you, and uh, God bless you. You know I love you, and we'll see you in the next one.